This is Happy Monkey. This is Happy Monkey. Yo, what's good? This is your nigga, Ralph. Now, I'm usually the guy behind the boards, but today I wanted to say happy anniversary. This is our first year anniversary for the Happy Monkey Podcast. And I just want to thank everybody that listened to our podcast and for all the listeners out there that have stuck around with us for this year-long journey. Thank you. And I I want to thank Vlad and Ramon for taking a chance on the podcast. Because I remember when we posed this idea to them, they thought it was crazy, but they took it in stride. And now we are a year removed from that event, and enjoy this podcast, guys. Have fun. What's going on, everybody? This week, the podcast has a sponsor, ArdentCannabis.com. They're known for the Ardent Nova, which is a decarber, but now they have a new Ardent where they decarb and infuse in the same device. So if you use our code MONKEY, M-U-N-K-E-Y, when you're checking out, you get $30 off your purchase. So please go on and check them out. They got a bunch of other devices. Hey, you might get lucky and find something that'll help you cook in your kitchen. Happy motherfucking one year anniversary everybody This is the Happy Monkey Podcast And we are still here Running and gunning everybody This shit is crazy First of all I want to talk about Why I start off with the Shit right So the beginning Just just to mention real quick um, In the beginning you know We are not media trained We've never done any of these things right So Kind of in the beginning, there was kind of like a nervous twitch type of thing. You know what I mean? I was like, I needed something to kind of like just like set it off, going. Set the yeah, mood off. I needed like something to like pump me up. So I started with that. And as that evolved and we kept like interviewing guests and I started doing that, I see I saw like guests react to that. You know what I mean? They were like, oh, shit. They, were, they didn't and see even that me, coming. It gets me in the mood. Yeah, like I'm going yeah, in the ring. So they didn't really see that coming and shit like that, man. So I kind of like that's what we that's why I kind of start that way. It was kind of like a nervous tick. And then it turned into a fun thing. And now we are here, my brother, my my man, Vladimir. And we are here with the one-year anniversary show, everybody. We are here. We're going to talk about us, the past, the present, the future. Everything fuck about everything Happy Monkey, man. Let's get into it. You know what I mean? Let's talk about some of your experiences in life. We're going to talk about some of my experiences in life. Maybe we'll mention Ralph and David, whatever. But let's just, we are here. And we just want to thank everybody for supporting us this whole time. And... Love is love, man. Let's 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 start with um I guess in the first podcast I talked how the whole happy monkey, how we how, like the whole experience in Amsterdam sparked the idea of having events and how to go about the events, right? So me and you've been to sessions before. We've been, you know, if you've never been to a session before, it's more like a flea market thing where there's a big open room and there's a bunch of tables and you go purchase weed or whatever the case may be. There's no real, like, um, there's no, uh, I guess, no loungy type of thing. Like, you can't go and sit down and smoke with whoever you came with. You know, it's just a rowdy bunch and, you know, not to knock it because I don't knock nobody's hustle. You know what I mean? We A lot of our friends are still in sessions and they're doing the damn thing. But... I felt, well, we felt, because I know you, we, we've been going out clubbing forever. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's not, it's, it's not a new thing to us, but we know what a club in New York feels like. And even us, let's be real, as smokers and stuff like that, like, I always knew about the sessions. You always knew about the sessions. We were not really going to go to that yeah, because that. maybe if it was another time when we were younger, yeah, but, not, yeah. but not now. And no. we knew there was a lot of other people like us that needed a, a, a certain style of events Absolutely. and ambiance to really feel comfortable and us being born and raised in New York we re- and in Manhattan specifically, mm-hmm. we understood by now at the age that we are and we were when we started this journey that, you know, um, p- 
people only come out to certain places where they feel comfortable that you know what I mean matches their vibe and their energy exactly and people got money in their hand let's be real they're not going to a place where they go pay so you know uh, uh, so much money and not have some fly service you know what I mean all right, so then that's cool. So we thought, all right, let's do events, and how are we going to do these events? Are we going to do it like the sessions? Hell no, right, Vladimir? So what are we going to do? So I thought to myself, let's fuck with people's senses, because that's what stoners, you know, they you fuck with your senses, you know, like the sense of smell, you know, uh, your entertainment, what are, you know, the music, what are, what are we doing for the stoners, right? So I thought to myself, all right, let's get a, let's get a DJ, obviously, so the ambiance can always be fly, the music can always be fly, and I got a magician. But, but I, I think that what <laughs> played a, because even though I knew and you knew, you know, what Manhattan likes or whatever, I think that the, the 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 straw that broke the camel's back when you went to Amsterdam and you got some type of idea of how yes. they do it over there. Yes. It helped you get like a like a format to start off of and then add Absolutely. what we were gonna add to it. So Absolutely. how so, so how so how what, what do you think that the 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 the, the like the the things that really, you know what I mean? That influenced that, me. That really like, you know what I mean, caught your eye and really helped you have that epiphany. Well what but well, two things caught my eye. Well, first, when we went to California, and I've never seen a real dispensary before that. So then when we went together, because I went before, but when we went together, it was different. So we went and we saw those dispensaries. We saw the different types of uh, weed and all that shit, right? Then I went to Amsterdam. It was a little bit different. It's not like dispensaries. I went to a lot of, like, cafe lounges where you go and smoke. But their menu is not as big as a California dispensary would be. And it's not like they got all the weed and all the shit displayed like a dispensary. You know how you walk in, they let you smell. You might you might not be able to touch it, but they let you smell. I didn't really get to do that in Amsterdam. They give you a menu and you pick out what you want. All right, I was like, whatever. I don't give a fuck. I, they got haze. They got this. Let's smoke it. When in Rome, you do what the yeah, Romans do. Yeah, you smoke, whatever. But the lounge area, like the like like the second part of the lounge area, is what really got me. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is some shit. That makes me feel like I'm at home, but I'm with total strangers, and it's okay. So that's the feeling that I thought. That's what jumped out to me. I'm like, I'm here by myself. And that's what another thing I was going to yeah. say. You were by yourself. I was by myself. As my girl was at the door, uh, in the in the hotel room, but I was by myself, and I was like just, you just talking to strangers and talking to strangers that weren't even from Amsterdam. So it was like... That to me, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, Ramon is not the usual time yeah. to open up conversation with strangers. So that yeah. was called my yeah. eye when he yeah. came back and told me. Um, when it comes to shit like that, I'm a true New Yorker. I mind my fucking business, and I want you to mind your business. You know what I mean? So that's basically how I've been. That's why this podcast is important because I'm able to like share and talk with Vladimir and our guests and all that shit, right? So Amsterdam lounge experience, I felt it. I said. Shit, this is the epiphany. I'm going to bother the shit out of Vladimir when I get back home. Like, the whole trip, I was already thinking, because I went to other places as well, but the whole trip, I'm already thinking, when I get back home, this is what we're going to do. And it took us about a year. See, people don't know that. It took yeah. us about a year of planning and going back and forth. Brainstorming. And brainstorming and, you know, just finding. And how and when yeah, and where. And like, 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 is it worth it? Because everybody's looking at us crazy. Like, this shit ain't even worth it. What you mean? At the beginning, I was right. looking at you like you're yeah. crazy at the beginning. So, so, you know what I mean? It started to make sense to me. So whatever, right? We got we already have friends who are influential, like International P and shit like that. These are already our old friends. So we already yes. so once we music started doing artists, the events, exactly. We already been in the music business for a bit, so we know what it is. Shit happened. It took off. It was great. Doctors, athletes, actors. Do you remember what the writers. first event was like? The first event, the first event, I was going crazy. I was making sure that. Uh, we had entertainment, DJ, and munchies at the table. You know what I mean? Because that was important for me. I'm like, yo, I want people to get free munchies. Like, you just come smoke, and when you finish smoking, obviously you want something to drink or something, but you need something right there for the cotton mouth. Right there. You need it right there. You can't get up and what you, you need it right there. So at the table, I was able, we were able to make sure people had munchies, right? Yeah, and, like candies and stuff. Yeah, at yeah, the yeah. Table. Like, right. So... And also, it was more like, like a playful 
setting where you know I had the magician I had a, a, a my man Raggedy Supreme Raggedy Supreme Raggedy Supreme is a mad playful dude and he, he wears a lot of colorful shit and he did like a he did like a performance for for the whole crowd but then he went around individually to everybody like you know what I mean to like their own little group or circle or whoever whoever you, you was guys with. gotta imagine guys you guys know when you're high it enhances your senses and you know what I mean you're in a different place so now all this entertainment is like so much better. Exactly. So as as that event went along, you know, number one, we took some. We we didn't post. We didn't, we never posted. We no. never did none of those things. But I took kind of like Polaroids of people and I gave them out, and people loved it. And they went home. They were like, "Yo, thank you. This shit was crazy." And again, from there, it just took off, right? And now, we, now that I look back at it, you know what I think about? Uh, I feel like. Now, because, you know, I look at things from many different angles now, you know, three years later, um, that that was like a social experiment. Yeah. Where, you know, you are seeing how people are going to react in this setting when there's no alcohol, there's right. only cannabis, and they, they don't have even to know where they're going. How people, about that? They don't know where they're going, and they're being around people aside from who they came with that they never met before. No. So this is like a total different social experiment. And now that I look back, it it, it, it helps me understand like how your characteristics and your personality played a role in everything, and mine did. Mm-hmm. So I look back and I say, you know, Ramon, the creator, you know, the monkey, the experience in Amsterdam, and then I feel like when you really think about it, like. A good friend of mine told me the other day I was talking mm-hmm. to, like, the happy part is what I played. Because a good friend of mine yes. told me, like, yes. Vlad, like, you don't know, you do it naturally, but your biggest, like, you know what I mean? Ha- the thing the that attribute. makes you, that, that yeah. helps you, that drives you is seeing other people happy. Right. And that was the perfect place and 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 uh and, and like you yes. know atmosphere for you to make as many people <laughs> happy in a short amount of time. Right. So... The whole point of, like, I mean, you have spoken about this off air a lot, a lot of times. Like, so the whole point of, like, using happy was because we've already seen all the sad shit. And we, and I've seen it, and I've seen a lot of brands where they use, like, tough words and stuff like that. I'm like, that's not what I'm going for. You know what I mean? So I'm glad they said that because you do convey that. And not only do you did, like, you know, Jose, Rose did, like, these are all the people that were involved. They conveyed this whole happy process. That's why that energy high. thing, I, yeah. I believe in this so much. Like, I believe energy plays a role in everything because I believe all these energies from us to Rose, to David, to Ralph, to everybody that was involved yeah. is what, like, made th- these events so. Amazing, yeah, these absolutely. Of energies. Absolutely. And we were able to evolve, right? So as, like we said, the first event, it was rough. We was, you know, trying to get it popping, make sure people had waters and this and that and munchies. To so then, like, catering the night to, like, making sure there's an artist there that paints some fly shit for us. So, like, um, you know, uh, like I said before, we had the magician, then we had contortionists, and we had, like, different type of... Uh, visual entertainment that while you high, you know, you're going to be like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? It's cool. So what happened with that and what I'm glad that happened with that international P, you know, and, and, you know, Ralph with his eye, you know, we going through all this and we meeting all these people cool and they mad cool with us now and all this shit. And P goes, but guys, what the fuck? I'm like, what you mean? What's up? But you guys got a billion, like all the greats of cannabis, Come through those doors. Wherever yes. you guys are, they come in. So let's just start talking to these people. We looked at him like he was crazy. Because at first, he wasn't trying to get the shine. He was like, yo, like, just like, fuck it, let's holler. We was like, nah, people, I don't choose you. You do it. Like, you, this is what yes, you do. Because at the moment, That's guys, what started the media. Vlad and Ramon, whether you believe it or not, especially Vlad, we had stage fright. And we, didn't, we weren't comfortable <laughs> no, with talking oh, on camera no. and, pu- no. and public speaking. So... No. He took the role of spearheading the media right. and setting off everything. Shout out to International P. Man absolutely, because, um, absolutely. If it wasn't for him, who knows if we would have set off this media thing as soon as we did. You know, he really saw things in us and in the movement that we didn't see ourselves back then. Exactly. So two things I feel started the media. International P, straight up big role. 
and conversations that we've always had about the imagery of New York City not being shown as that far as the cannabis, the a, stoner. A topic that we always spoke about right. because um, we um, we always, you know, especially after, you know, we started doing these events and really started getting deep into the industry, like as far as like media and public persona, there was no way of anybody having any idea what the scene and what the culture and no. what the corporate or anything is we really know. like. We was like, fuck it, the, like like anything is like in the in the in the East Coast specifically the Northeast. There was nothing, you know. I mean, there was no. no representation. So if you we took it for granted, but as we saw people coming through these doors that weren't from here, they had no idea no. because we just knew what went on here, but nobody outside of here really had any clue of how anything works here. No, well, we not we're not the typical city, right? It's New York, man. This shit runs on a whole different time frame, <laughs> and it's. Again, I just feel like we represent the stoner who is all the way productive. That is a fact. You know what I mean? So I felt like International P, us knowing all these things, just already being around this people started the whole media shit. Like, fuck it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's on. Like, let's start, you know, fuck it. Let's start getting on more pictures for you, Vladimir. Let's start doing more things. You know, even Steve D'Angelo hit us with the, yo, guys, it's, you know, that's it. Like, y'all guys, y'all got to do what yeah, y'all got to do. Like, I'm it's not going to lie. You know, I have to shout out Steve D'Angelo because, um, you know, we once we started going to conferences and stuff like that and, uh, we we met him in in Vegas in an Arc View, yeah, meeting, which that was, was one of our cool. biggest conferences. And me and Ramon met him briefly, told him our story, and by the time the story was done, he said, "I'm going to do everything to support you guys." And I said, "Why would you do that? You just met us." He said, "Because you guys are the hometown heroes, absolutely." And I always root for the hometown heroes. And to this day, that man has been like a guiding light yeah, he for us. us. Like, Heavy. Uh, like, you know what I mean? Has been there for us in any way he can and we really appreciate that and that helped us see that we were destined for some big things with somebody like him that's the godfather of cannabis to see us in this light. We we knew that we had a, a big role to play. And then, not just us, I remember the the when he came and he celebrated his birthday at one of our events. Mm -hmm. He, by the, by the time his birthday was done, made me get all of the staff and he wouldn't leave until I did. Yeah. And he looked at them all in the face, ladies and gentlemen. He said, I want all you guys to look at yourself and gals in the mirror before you come to work or every day and know that you are super, you are superheroes. You guys are changing the world. Absolutely. And that didn't just touch them. That touched us too. And yeah, it showed us like boss. that. We have like, you know, a big role to play, not just for ourselves and for our families, but for the world. Um, I'm not going to skip out on some details on that Vegas trip when we was with Steve, right? So just so y'all understand the setting, it's a it's a private party where it's just like people from his company, a company, big investors and all this shit. And it's me, Vlad. You know what I mean? And he met us um, and he was like in a corner. Like he wasn't even like hanging with everybody. He was in the corner. He was like, and he was talking, having a conversation with us. And let, I don't know if you remember this. Somebody was coming to kind of like come and talk to him because he's Steve D'Angelo and everybody in the fucking room wants to talk to Steve D'Angelo. So somebody comes and kind of like cuts off the conversation and he let the, t the person say his, his piece or whatever they was going to say. And he was like, okay, thank you. But I'm talking to here to two of my friends, and I just met them through Barbara. Which I respect which, a lot. Which I respect <laughs> very much. Very <laughs> much. So I would like for you to just give me a second with the fellas. When I seen that, I was like, oh, shit, this nigga just basically said, my nigga, fuck off. <laughs> like respectfully. I'm talking, yeah, respectfully, fuck off. I'm talking to the homies. And he, because, <laughs> right, because I didn't, you know, this is a, you know, he's a, he's a social guy, but he wasn't very social in the room. He was just mm -hmm. kind of trying to be him. So the fact that he was kind of like hollering at us and kind of like dissing other people, I was like, oh, all right, now I know we, now we, I know we doing something right. Now, I need to rewind a little bit, Ramon. Mm. If you remember... The way it's crazy how life works, everything comes full circle. So now we're doing these events. Now Ramon has emphasized on the food and the munchy thing. A good friend of mine says, 
there is this chef that I would like you to meet that infuses food <laughs> and sets up a meeting with this person. And it just happens to be Josh, a.k.a. the Metabolist, our brother. <laughs> and then we get him, uh, you know, making different concoctions, infused concoctions at the events. Yeah, yeah, and just, then just he loved. knows. He's, he's mad love. And he's like, yeah, he's an amazing yeah. person. But he knows about some things that are at the time Ramon and Vlad don't know about, which is right. these conferences that are happening, uh, yeah. like gatherings, Canada Gather, Revel, um, uh, High and Y. Of, there you go. Yeah. So he knew about these things already because he's like been an advocate for like 20, 30 years, you know? So he's been yeah, in the loop. Josh is a little so, OG on the low. So I, rem I never forget, Ramon didn't go that time. I, I went yeah, along went with him. Time. And he walked in because, you know, he's not as social yeah, as yeah, yeah. me and stuff like that. He's sort of like Ramon a little bit in that aspect. And he tells me, well, I only know like two or three people here. But, you know, I come <laughs> here to these things all the time. And I told them, don't mm -hmm. worry about it, Josh. By the end of the night, you're going to know the whole room. Guaranteed he said, yeah. That. And you already know, I spoke to everybody twice at that conference. Well, what people don't understand is, so, let's, so let, let me give people a little, a little, maybe a little history about Vlad, right? So what people don't understand is he's always been like this. This is not something that Happy Monkey, you know, he, you know, he did with Happy Monkey. He's always been the fucking, the people talker. He talks to people. He's the mayor type of shit. Like, this is his thing. Um, he's done it on his block. Uh, this is like, People, he gathers, he gives everybody 10 to a half an hour of his time. And I'm talking about everybody. He don't got a problem. I, I was just telling like, Ralph earlier, and you were mentioning to him, Ralph said, you know, I'm from 139th and Broadway, guys, in uh, in Hamilton Heights originally when I was born and raised. So I said to walk from 139th to 145th, which is six blocks, Ralph says, how long would it take you, half an hour? I said, no. Ramon looks at him, he says, like an hour and a half, because walking there, guys, I, you know, knew everybody in the neighborhood, so I would stop every half a block and somebody I haven't seen in a while stop to talk to them for 10, 15 no minutes, No exaggeration. Minutes. And if he really, 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 really liked them and this was like a good friend of his, oh, that's it. We might stay, that's it. We might have been on 140th and that's it for an hour. We stood on 140th. We didn't even make it on 145th. Be no... No T-shirt buying, no nothing. And then, like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you like to call me Santa Claus, Vlad Claus, and it's just like, I don't know what it is. Like, you know, even though, you know, we come from humble beginnings and we didn't have much, I always felt generous. like I always felt generous and I always felt like um, sharing because I always been into trying to make everybody happy around yes, me. Yes. You know what I mean? And you're generous, and, and, and just so people don't understand, not only... You know, materialistic, just you're generous. You're generous with your time. You're generous like you just like to be. You want to be there in the action, talking it out, whatever it is. You love that shit. And then Ramon has always had one thing, too. Ramon has always been like, you know, I was more local growing up. Ramon was always more of an adventurer. Yeah, I was Always wanting to go outside wild. the box. Always, you know thinking about cultures outside the box yes, and stuff yes, like yes, that. Yes, so yes. Ramon's always been like that in that aspect. Always super connoisseur. Want to go to the end of the world, wherever the best weed is. Yeah, man. So these things, I always knew, oh, man, Vlad will be a cinch over here. He'll be a cinch over there. He'll be a cinch over there. Because just, it's just, he already did this naturally. So it's like, give him a platform, it's on. You know what I mean? But just getting over that hurdle what we needed was this podcast. Like this podcast just was helped us kind of get over the hurdle because it kind of helped you do the source. It helped you do, you know, we move, we were able to move on. So, so yeah. So then that wasn't, that was a good one too. I remember that, um, I got requested to speak at source 360 with Doshita Dawson. Yes. Yes. Leo Bridgewater yes, was yes, the moderator. Me, yeah. And yeah, I yeah. asked Ramon, I said, what do you think? Should I do this? Cause like I said, at the time we weren't public speaking and no, everything. And no. Ramon was like, yeah, you have to do it. That's it. Yeah, it's on. Like, and I mean, I cause like, we were already trying to avoid yeah. it. Yeah. But it was too late. Like, it's like, it's on. And, and to be honest, like once, uh, 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 they told they told us Branson was gonna be on it. I'm like, Branson, fuck yeah! Yes. I'm like, of course we get on it. Yeah, like, yo, my brother, you go and I'm gonna sit front seat, and we go, and you go talk for the sauce, bro. And you like, ask Ramon, and I was so nervous, guys. I didn't show it, but once I got up there, I said, well, I have to give it my all. And remember, I'm sitting next to... And we got there late. Super, we got there late, of course, <laughs> on Dominican time. I don't know if you guys know, Dominicans are always late. So... Um, we, we get there late and then, you know, I get up there 
And then um, I'm sitting next to Desita Dawson, ladies and gentlemen. Who's this, a champ? This, 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 this lady is a scientist, on, yeah, entrepreneur. On, nigga, yeah, We're yeah, talking yeah, about on, like nigga. serious, she, she, yeah, heavy, yeah, yeah, yeah. hitting, you know, intellectual people. Branson, which is like a staple uh, legend uh, yeah. from our neighborhood. And then I go and I speak, guys, and the people get up. And it's like a standing ovation kind of thing. And I'm amazed. Like, oh, shit. It's all, man. People, the people were waiting for the people, you know what I mean? Because again, you people know, people late, right? You know, every like you said, everybody there is has their rank or whatever the case may be. But you're the new, we the new, so you know what I mean? It's it's on. We and, here, and then um, so after that, we made a decision where like that's it. You know, we have to come and get come out of the shadows and really start, you know, talking to the people in every way we can. And I don't remember how or when, but Ralph that is the producer to this podcast has always been into podcasts. Yeah. When I didn't even know what a podcast was, ladies and gentlemen, so we can be clear, I had no idea what a podcast was because I'm not too hip on a lot of stuff that's going on a lot of times. I'm sort of like living in the present and he starts saying like, it'll be good to have a podcast. And then I don't know exactly what was it that we were like, yo, we're going to try this and we're going to do this. Yeah, I think it was, it, it was P again. So P was like, yeah, because because I guess he was talking. We was talking with P. International P was like, yeah, it gotta be y'all two motherfuckers. And you know he's real quick with the whole. And he painted the movie and he did the whole shit. And then he said, come on, we're gonna sit down and and we started recording ourselves and just trying to see how you know if it worked or not. And by the way, guys, like I said, shout out to him again. He's another one that gave me a lot of confidence. Like I said, guys, you know we, <laughs> he's he, a wild he, boy. He happens to be a close friend of ours, close friend of mine for yeah. twenty years. So you know what I mean, like you know. You know, we we take him like you know, just like a normal person. But the reality is, the yeah, man nah, has nah. been on accolades. over twenty movies, yeah, hosted yeah, yeah. a show on MTV, yeah. has done so many things. On, and before not, the that's, that's day of that source thing, I asked him to media train me. He looked me in the face and said, "Vlad, you need absolutely no media training. Just go." Word, that's crazy. And you know, and you know, we call this bluff when we gotta call this bluff. <laughs> so for him to just be like, "Yo." Fuck it, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, I think we good. Let's do it. And he saw it. And look, and my man P, he, he, listen, first of all, like we said, he's a professional, right? So he gets on shit. He don't just do shit for free most of the time, right? So he's like running around like, yo, once he saw it, he saw what we had. He was like, come on, man. Like, y'all niggas don't need nobody. Y'all good, man. Yo, Ralph, y'all good. And then um, I think that was about a year and a half into us doing events or something along those lines. Maybe something a year. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah, so then um, then the crazy part was that we had P doing that, and before we even came out, things snowballed fast because we had huge guests like Steve D'Angelo, yeah, um, yeah. DJ Wu Kid, yeah. Danny Danko. We actually went and actually DJ Wu Kid interviewed International oh, he was P crazy. on our behalf of us on, on Sirius Radio, ladies oh, okay, and gentlemen, yeah, yeah, which I, is a I global platform. Yeah. So this is the start before me and Ramon even yeah. get on the mic and really even start talking to people. Right. So we felt like, fuck it, again, you know, the International Peace situation and just being able to just be around all these people and interview them and give people information. Um, like literally you could go back right now on our YouTube and you'll see all these different interviews back then like and all these different people that we have we even went out to the streets like we did every, like we it was crazy we went out to the streets we went out to the Cannabis Day Parade we spoke to Jumani Williams that's you know what I mean like we, we was just this was before me and you did anything yes you know what I mean this is just being activists in the background showing up to rallies this and that you know doing that's all a lot stuff. of things a lot of things that's very important to point out guys no, we don't talk about it enough, but it needs to be spoken about. We are advocates. What does that mean? You know, anybody can sit and say that they're an advocate. What that means is anytime there was a rally to Albany or, or New Jersey, so many other different places, we yeah. showed up and we went. Somebody from our organization was mm -hmm. there six, seven in the morning with signs. You know what I mean? Protesting against the war on cannabis promoting legalization so we just we're not saying that just to get behind the mic or a camera no, and say that we like did that we already. really did that yeah that, that's already done we're not you know what i mean so these are all the things that were happening 
snowballing into this podcast. You know, all this shit was like, fuck it. It's like, it's like time. You know and now, I mean? thanks to you guys for believing and supporting our movement. And you believe it, Ramon, 53 episodes <laughs> during this crazy roller coaster of a year. We Not really. Managed, I just put my head down and we, just smoked we, we and just talked to people. We managed to get you guys a different guest every week. Absolutely. Stay positive. We was, come make, on, my make our way, hard. Make our way to the studio when our studio's by Times Square, guys, and we were literally the only people outside. Yeah. And, like, it was that like, was crazy. I am legend. Yo, but shout we out knew. to every guest that called, that came outside. You know, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a lot of y'all, you know what I mean? And y'all took out your time and, you know, you, yeah, of course, you know, I, I know people want to come and, 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 and talk to us because, you know, they think it's the, the cannabis and it's cool and all this shit. But they, we're not talking about people who are not bosses here. Like, these are all people who, like, own their companies or a big personality and they all got time. They all, they, you know, they all took out their time to talk to us. So it's like during the pandemic. Yeah, and I believe, guys, that one of the biggest assets yeah. that we bring as a media platform and as a podcast is that since me and Ramon were fortunate enough to be around all these amazing people that are in the cannabis industry, meaning like the corporate cannabis industry, doctors, lawyers, politicians, CEOs, accountants, you name it, that we soaked up a lot of knowledge that we got from them and we're able to sit here and break it down in layman's terms because it's yeah. actually quite complicated to so the average person can understand the opportunities and the gravity of what's happening right now and what this cannabis plant is going to do for the world, the industry, and society. And I think that's one of the biggest things we've done, especially in a place where it, New York, where these conversations were just like very, very few and far in between. Yo, my man be taking podcast classes on the side of the side with Walter Cronkite and some shit. What's going on? Trying to call me a Dominican Walter Cronkite. Yo, you believe this guy? right here spitting bars. I was like, shit, all right, brother. Like, I ain't even, yo, nah, man. But yo, brother, like, again, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of myself. We've made it here. We, we we still not done. We still got a lot, lot, lot to do. We still got a lot to show y'all. We've already been doing a lot of shit. So, you know, you want to talk about a little bit of what we maybe go do in the future? Like, yeah, what's guys. Going so, on? What's um, going on? one of the we things. We already got a little while. We, we, we already um, uh, have. We, we stepped into fashion, guys. We are, we you know, we've we had already in the past dropped. A few, a, a few. We do everything very limited, so we dropped a limited edition <laughs> hat before. We dropped some shirts. We dropped some pouches. Our newest thing is our newest line, Happy Monkey T-shirts that yeah, are yeah. amazing quality. Say Happy Monkey in the back. And then the other thing, guys, is that um, soon. Don't be surprised if when, if you're in a recreational legal state, if you don't go to one of your dispensaries and you don't see. A happy monkey strain because that we're in talks with hopefully for the near future. Yes, yes. We are going to officially step into the, to the to the plant touching side happy of things. Monkey fire. And also hopefully when things ever normalize again, we also plan on doing happy monkey music festivals. Absolutely. That also hopefully be coming to a town near you. Absolutely. And I'm really proud, I have to say, we haven't mentioned it yet, hey. of one of our latest latest ventures that's actually going to be on its way to a one year anniversary, which is our E Monkey Biz Ooh. magazine. That's ba -ba 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 Thanks to David Hernandez, our yeah, CEO. my nigga. That shit is that, going strong. That, you know what I mean? It has done an amazing job and it really rivals some of the top publication out there. And I think it's just another way, like I said, which is our to goal. To keep in the loop. To, 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 to keep you in the loop. To, to really give people as much information about the culture, core and everything in between that cannabis affects. And if you and want I to think sign that, up to that, you got to, you know, it's real simple. You could just get on the website. Remember, happymonkeywithayou.com. Real simple. Sign up. You get mad exclusive shit. You got, you, you know, it, you get shit that you don't even hear on the podcast. Like, because, you know, David gives the super exclusives. He knows shit before we do. So he really gives you exclusives. So definitely, if you want to sign up for that, just get on the website. And it's funny how life works because, like, I remember, like, in January, you know, we had felt like, you know what I mean? Like, not to toot our own horn, but we had really took events 
and hospitality and cannabis to a whole new level. And we had already gone far and beyond and we needed to diversify more. And we said we were already doing the media thing, yeah. but we decided to give it a lot more time and energy. And it's crazy how life works because this is before COVID. Yeah. And then COVID comes and everybody else was banking on who's going to have the biggest event for right. 2020, 20. And we were over. already like, we were already like focused on media and yeah. that was our thing. Like we were, Tunnel vision and media, and here comes uh, COVID. There's no more events. There's no, no more conferences, and we have like a treasure trove of content. And we must have dropped like from like from like January. Oh, a lot of shit. So now we must have dropped like maybe like a hundred, hundred some pieces. Absolutely, of content. we had a whole bunch of different shows. We ended up adding like new pieces of different like. Shit that we just came up with, like fucking Happy Monkey ASMR, or fucking Valley Not Valley, which is a monkey show, which is a munchy show, monkey munchy show. Um, basically, ha ha happy hour with Vlad. Happy hour with you, my brother. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. It just like you know, it just <laughs> went into so many things. You got puffs with puffs. Shout out to Puffins and one of our brand ambassadors. Who, 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 who? Not only that, he is the vibe provider, bro. Like if you talk about Happy Bucky, you see, like you, like he is. Like a spirit of that, you know what I'm saying? Because he's a super weed connoisseur. He's super swaggy, and he always got like a puff go, or like, you know, he be he just be ready. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, a smoker that has everything. He got like a kit on deck. You know what I mean? And he's definitely not stupid because he's a very intelligent guy. So it's like. That's that right there. That dude to me. When you say happy monkey, I'm like that nigga Puffington is happy monkey. And then, uh, you know what I mean? Like I said, you know, um, these people that came to our events, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? We ended up building real friendships and real relationships with from athletes that or ex-athletes and entrepreneurs like, like yeah. Al Harrington, which is our brother from another oh, yeah, mother. Man. Shout out to he him and Viola. He getting it popping. God bless him. You know what I mean? He's our brother. Yeah. All the way to corporate to the other side. You know, the Canadian security. Yeah, exchange. that was that was Shout dope. out Yo, to James come on. Black. Shout out to them, bro. Shout out to Mad Love. They to, to Barrington Miller. <laughs> Shout out to <laughs> Richard Carlton. Yeah. So it's just like these people that came through our doors. It, we really, like you said, the whole smoking thing that you create a different bond. We built yeah. a real bond with these people yes. where like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's like their family now. Yeah, because it's it's literally the peace pipe, bro. It's literally the peace pipe. It's literally forget about what you do about work. Forget about that. You know what I mean? This, that This becomes a different conversation. You know what I mean? When you're smoking with somebody, it changes things. Cause now it's like let's say let's say you are a high elite surgeon or some wild shit or whatever the case may be, and I'm just some regular Joe construction guy, but I know more about weed than you. And I believe like when you really think about it, I think that that was another thing at our events that um that that changed the narrative is that. I believe there were people specifically in Manhattan that would never sit in the same room together. Oh, and, no. And from different, you know, classes and different races mm -hmm. that once they sat next to each other, they really just realized that they everybody's yeah, we stressed just and everybody yeah. needs a joint to just forget about yeah, all that. My no brother. matter where yeah. you're the garbage man or the billionaire. Oh, that that's shit out the unanimous. Oh, that everybody shit out the needs to blow some steam off and smoke a joint. Yeah. And, and really, you know what I mean, relax. And you know, guarantee ain't no violence involved. Everybody's just smoking, like, yeah, how you that's doing, another man? major thing. Like, you know, no. it's two and a half years of doing an event, never an argument or a fight. No. I think that's unheard of in hospitality yeah. in New York. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we forgot got to mention culture if you want to talk about culture people oh. at our events i never forget which was an honor to me which you know some of the people some uh, person that i look up to uh freeway ricky ross ah, you know shout out to crazy him motherfucker. Hell he's yeah, doing amazing things him. in california in the kind of industry popping but more importantly you know what i mean he was such a cool humble person yeah. and showed us so much love you know yeah man he, he's he's an og man he went through it and now he's out and he's actually like the example of you know, getting out of jail and literally getting legit. You know what I mean? Like he went straight legit. He got his own cannabis. He literally got his own flour, oils, all sorts of shit, man. So, uh, yo, shout out to him. And, yo, 
the, you know, he, again, he's an example of that we can kind of like everybody has a chance. And he's doing amazing things with yeah. his chance. He's got a li- he's a license holder in yeah. California. He's, he's got his own strain. Yeah. Then you want to go deeper into culture, and it's crazy because we knew him before all these events set off. Hmm. Our brother Hawk Newsom, which ah. is the founder of Black Lives Matter, the New York we chapter. We got him on. We got him he, on the podcast. He was on the podcast, yeah. and aside from that, like he's our friend and such a cool person, and we bonded <laughs> through him. Same thing through the events and. This man has gone on right now doing all the injustices that have happened this year yeah. and really like I think that's a really good podcast. I think you guys should go back and listen to that one because you can hear him before COVID. You know what I'm saying? So he's he not really like whatever he's saying now, he was kinda saying this shit before. <laughs> he was we wild boy. So, you know, I think that's a good podcast. I should go back to that one. Yeah, man. And then like, you know what I mean, to see like, you know what I mean, what an impact he's had on, on the world during these times, giving people hope, fighting for justice for the disenfranchised is just honor to call him a friend, you know? Yeah, man. That and was then good. if you go into yeah, sports good people. guys, I am not a super sports guy, but man, yeah, have we either. had have we had some big high ones level sports people come through our doors? I like I don't know if you guys know about On the MMA, podcast, mixed martial arts. Oh yeah, we Nate. had Nick Diaz come through our events. Nate Diaz, that was crazy. Ron Gracie. Yeah. So these people are legends in their own right, and they're just hanging out, smoking with yeah, us, kicking it with us, just kicking it. That shit was that shit was crazy, bro. I was like, yo, I can't like motherfuckers just be, and then. Again, these are, these are not like, all right, they're fighters or whatever, but they got money. Like, they're not like a little bit of, you know what I mean? So they just fuck it. They didn't give a fuck. They're like, all, we go all the way, if you want to go into boxing, shout out to our brother Shannon Briggs, which attended Yo, one time. Oh, we, oh, one legendary. of our events was in a yacht, guys. Yeah, that we was had legendary. A yacht that was party legendary. going around Manhattan. And Shannon Briggs, shout out to him and all the things he's doing. He's also in the cannabis crazy. industry. That was Came crazy. to hang out with us, man. Yeah, man. Let's go, champ. That's his Let's thing. Let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. Yeah, man. We had mad people. We even had my man Ill Will, bro, on the podcast. Yeah, like, let's, Wilson let's stop Chandler, playing, my nigga. Also a cannabis entrepreneur. Such a humble and amazing person. Absolutely. Came and kicked it with us. Always showed us love. You know what I mean? Whenever he was in town, pull up, holla at us. You know what I mean? How about one of my favorite ones? Not for nothing, because this was kind of like in the beginning, and these brothers, these are these niggas is legendary in music. They're Shocktown legends, and they did a crazy ass intro for the podcast. J. Ivy and, and Cootie. Cootie. Yeah. Oh my God, that so, was crazy. So, ladies and gentlemen, so Cootie is part of Creative Control. He's done so many amazing things. He's one of the first people to start documenting Kanye. He just did a documentary for oh, Stefan yeah, Marbury. Come on, come on. He's like he's like amazing. I think he did, he was involved in one of the Muhammad Ali, you know, documentaries. But such a cool, humble brother, man, and always showed us love. And Jay Ivy is a poet and an artist. He's the one that gave John Lynch his name. Yeah, he he's, is, a, he's uh, a he's he, a he's he 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 was on uh, one of Jay Z's albums. But like I said, man, these people are just so humble and so cool and always showed us so much love. That was mad fun. And then let's not forget a, 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 a old good friend of ours. Good friend of ours. We know this motherfucker way before Happy Monkeys and Brands and when this shit is, was a lifestyle and all this other shit. When it was just, you know, EK and Glass type of shit, brother. Shice, brother. Let's not Shice forget the Bubs. legendary Shice Bubs. Because Shice Bubs Shout is a legend. Smokers Club. Let's be real. And yeah. Herb Invaders. Let's be real. He, he is definitely like forget. one of the people that was a cannabis influencer before there was yeah, Instagram. Before, yeah. Before like, there was social media. Absolutely. He was heavily involved in the music industry heavily involved in the cannabis scene Absolutely. and is a true like native new york cannabis legend in his own yeah, right yeah let's be real like he the, the, he the trendy part that that was him b let's be real like they, before him you know what i mean like he he bought that 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 street shit to y'all industry whatever was going on you know what i mean no yeah and then he was involved like you know I mean, he was involved with that whole dipset movement Absolutely, at the beginning the gang, you know what i mean and he just like you know what i mean and now he's rocking with johnny shipes and yeah, uh, smoke yeah, this and all of them yeah, smoke bro, club. Smoke Dizza, yeah and bro, there are some rocking. other people too that were really you know what i mean putting it down and they were probably one of the only peoples that was showing the culture of new york before mm-hmm. Us, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because uh, 
there wasn't many people, like I said, you know, yeah. looking at it like that. They are very music based, but they were definitely yeah, heavy man. cannabis. Exactly. So that was crazy. You know what I mean? We, you know, and that's our man. And it's dope to kind of have that feeling like, oh shit, like this is my, this is my man Shikes. You know, like nigga, that's my nigga. You know what I yeah, mean? So it's, man. It's, it's dope to have one, that feeling man. now. You know always I mean? been real to from 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 the beginning to yeah, the end, man. man. Hell yeah, and he always, always been a heavy smoker. This ain't like from now, like he trying to no. front on y'all or whatever. The kid, he nigga always been big smoking, like you know what I mean? Big big smoking. And then right now, guys, like you know what I mean? You like you know we started off just audio with the podcast, guys, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but now we're gonna be delivering crazy visuals to you, thanks to my nigga Ralph, which is. You know what I mean? A film editing master. So he's going to make us look like superstars. So, you know what I mean? Uh, so now we're going to be hitting you guys with the visuals. So you're going to have to, you know, you're going to be able to have yeah, something to watch. Yeah, tune in, man. Tune in. You got these two gentlemen right here to watch and shit like that. But we got a whole bunch of other guests. It's mad fun. And, you know, this is Happy Monkey, man. We ain't done, man. We got a lot more to talk about. We got a lot more shit to do. Um, and then there's another thing that you guys should watch out for, and it and it's just crazy because it's just like it's it's, it's like it is it, me and Ramon are you know knowledgeable and we have ideas, but the people you guys give us inspiration and 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 you know give us guidance of where to go. So recently, I remember um, actually um, I sent the Monkey Biz magazine to some friends and stuff, and. Uh, and the podcast, and they are they're international. They're from Colombia, yeah. and they were like, "When are we gonna get this in Spanish?" In español, we need Miela. this in Spanish. So Miela. now, you know, what I mean, we're 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 both bilingual. So I don't know if you guys know that. So now, they look out they for they 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 some they Spanish they segments they because now we're gonna spread all the knowledge, all the information, all the culture we know to all these Spanish speaking countries and all the Latinos in in America also. So. Yeah. Look out for that, guys. Yeah, man. So, um, I don't know. I feel like we still, I still, I still want to like give people maybe a little bit more insight of what we've been doing and what's going on, and maybe a little bit of the past, maybe for Ralph, because I know Ralph. There's a few things that he be that he be like wondering about and shit like that, man. And it's like, yo, what's you know, what's up? So I don't know. What's going on, my nigga? Ralph, talk to me nice. Don't talk to me twice. Oh, uh, yeah, ask. Let me know. I don't even know. You got my notebook. Everything I needed to ask. Give it to him. He got them all. It's all good. Brother Dave in the cut. The only thing you're really missing is the is the shoutouts, the staff, and the. Mm. So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's another major part that you guys need to understand, right, guys? You know, me and Ramon are cool, and, you know, we are the, you know, the co-founders and all that good stuff. But the reality is that we would not be here with you guys if we didn't have such an amazing team that helps us look good, that helps us complete this mission and this goal that we have to yes, spread all this, all this wisdom that we have. Well, no, so we want to shot them all out today. That go you know, through your headaches. Let's not forget that they have to deal with your headaches. Oh, yeah, you know, that comes with the package. But um, uh, so, you know, David Hernandez, shout out to him, COO of the Ooh. company. You know what I mean? Ooh. He's added so much value to the company from the magazine to editing to emails to so many things could go on and on thank i want to thank him for everything he does for happy monkey that my nigga man. my nigga He's ralph rafael hernandez actually his brother <laughs> the, the, the 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 guy with the film degree behind the scenes <laughs> that um you know helps us sound great does production, does editing. He's like a renaissance man, guys. Absolutely, absolutely. And he's got so much, just like us, so much more to give and to to show the world. And we're going to help you guys see. Brothers. Then, shout out to our brother we mentioned earlier, Jose Rose. (laughs) He's been rocking with us. Legendary. And he's like, guys, like a person I've known this man for a while, never seen him had a bad day, always smiling, Always positive energy, Happy always monkey. giving us ideas, always repping us. 
Thank you for rocking with us, Rose. Absolutely. Want to shout out Puffington. Hey, hey, hey. He's Puffington. another one that travels all over the world. Yeah. He's at every cannabis event in the tri-state area and yeah, always be, repping Happy Monkey. He's the man. Want to want to thank him for rocking with us. We want to thank the Weekend Warriors. Yes, sir. The Weekend yes, sir. Warriors yes, sir. guys are Rio and original. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. This team. Of media, marketing Jordan. gurus, yeah. Jordan, they have helped us propel our media game. You know what I mean? They're, you know, great Absolutely. at, you know, content, videos, editing, <laughs> you know, name it. Shit together. Let's not forget my man Tech King in the building, Walker yeah, Studios, all tech. the type of shit, man. Thank you for taking for the nigga going through all the headaches with us. And he's been our original photographer model. Uh, basically, me and him don't know how to use shit, so he knows how to use everything for us type of situation. <laughs> you want to shout it out Tiffany Vieira, which is... Another part of the Happy Monkey staff that yes, she yes, helps yes. all, you know, keep us organized. You know what I mean? Helps us, you know what I mean? Make sure that we are on top of our game, keeping me and Ramon in line with all the 50,000 things we got on our plate. Shout out to you, Tiffany. Absolutely. Let's not forget the, the boss lady, OG, Black Rose in the motherfucking house. Thank you. from so she, she been supporting us from day one, like for like, even like before it was like, you know, she's our homie. So it was like cool to have someone who was kind of like already doing the thing and like, like just jump on board and be like, nah, I fucks with y'all and y'all already the homies and we go support each other and like that's it. Like she just do shit on her own. Like this shit that she just be taking. Like she's a boss. Like she's something we don't gotta like, you know, she's she's the homie. So thank you to her all your support and love. I want to thank Rico. Absolutely. Rico, guys. He designed Rico, the designer. He designed the shirts, yeah. designing a lot of our fashion. You know what I mean? So shout out to Rico. You know what I mean? Look out for him. He's going to be the young Virgil Abloh, the Dominican version before you know it. So, you know, shout out to him, man. And we just blessed to have so many amazing people that believe in this movement, believe yeah, in me and man. Ramon to, to help us man. I keep don't wanna, going. I don't want to forget everybody. Yo, for, yo, shout out to Lewis, man. What, what LR Creative Agency. Ooh, you know what I mean? Yes. He's definitely helped us get our merch shit together and our ash and everything. You know what I mean? He's always been definitely from day one. Just showing up, you know, making sure we get all our shit together. Uh, I want to shout out Josh, a.k.a. the yes, Metabolist. Yes, Believe in us uh, since yes, day sir, one. Yes, sir. Rocking yes, with sir, us. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Giving us ideas. It's a lot of people. It's supporting a lot of people. us. It's a lot of we want to shout out all the DJs that rock with us through all our events. Say Lagoon, DJ Omi, uh, DJ Nala. Um, DJ Aqua from Japan. She's all the way in Japan. Oh, by the way, guys, that goes that good thing he mentioned Japan. Don't be surprised if you don't see us in Japan soon. Ooh. Happy Monkey will be coming to Japan, Japan before you know it. Yeah. Damn. It's crazy though. I'm gonna be smoking over there too. Don't worry. <laughs> Definitely. So guys, man, but the most important shout out is to you. All the Absolutely. people that have been rocking yeah. with us for 53 <laughs> episodes. You know what's crazy? Do I don't want to sound the bad I don't and make the that ugly. Like a cliche, but it's the truth. That's crazy. I would yeah, never with nobody think without you guys. This, yeah, it is the that's crazy because you watch people say that shit all the time. And you're like, eh. But it's the truth because you don't really keep going with things like this unless people kind of support it. Because we're not making money. We're not rich off the podcast. Like, the podcast is... You know, fun. This is like I said. This is kind of like therapeutic for me and him, and it's able to give you guys an uh, insight on the cannabis scene as far as what, where we go, and how we do things. You know, the, we, uh, you know. Again, we got all sorts of different experiences. If you watch us on YouTube, like we got grow house trips and all that shit. So we give you a dope scene on what's going on with the cannabis, but it's it's helpful for you and I, and you know, it's helpful maybe for the for the for the typical person that wants to know about anything about cannabis right yeah of course and then like i said man you know you guys inspire us as much as we inspire you all your comments all your feedback all the things that you tell us help us know that we're on the right track or on the wrong track or whatever so thank you for believing and supporting us and people's always ask us i don't understand what is happy monkey is it events this that it's a movement it's ladies a and gentlemen movement. so it's a, it, it's a lot you know what i mean it's magazines it's media it's yeah. events it's festivals it's, it's everything clothes. that it's, it's that it's, the culture and the and the plant brings absolutely it's 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 how you smoke it it ain't what you smoke it's how you smoke it 
It's where you smoking it. It's with who you smoking it. You know what I'm saying? So it's all these different things. You know what I mean? So that's that was our whole thing about Happy Monkey is making sure that everything else, because everybody, you can always smoke. The smoker is always going to find weed anywhere in the world. They just going to, you know what I mean? But it's all about how you smoke it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, remember the number one thing that Happy Monkey doesn't do it for the clout. We, we do, do it, it for, for the, the culture. culture. We are blessed to end the season, 53 episodes. Yeah. Look out for Crazy. season two. Yes, you never yes, know yes. who will come on the boulevard. Yeah, We're full yeah, of surprises. Yeah, yeah. So stay tuned. Thank you guys for now. Checking out. Ralph, Vlad, Ramon. Yes, 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 yes. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, you're too, too blessed, blessed to be stressed. stressed. Things will get Great greater later. later. Peace, love, and happiness. Yes, yes. What's good, everybody? This is your nigga, Ralph, trying to keep you fresh with the info from Happy Monkey. Every single podcast, you already know what it is. If you haven't followed us yet, follow us on Instagram at happymonkey underscore or happy monkey goodies now remember that's monkey with a u also if you haven't checked us out we're on youtube so check out our channel happy monkey tv keep us current live everything with the culture